hello everybody so today I wanted to make a video on how to properly wear face masks and how to properly take off and put on gloves so I got a lot of questions from um, friends Decided to make this video and share it and hopefully this can help you uh, stay safe and reduce the chances of you uh, getting the coronavirus contaminating yourself with it spreading it um, so a lot of times there's concerns about all the information that's out there and whether or not it's accurate so the first thing I'm gonna do in this video is basically explain why what I am presenting is accurate and I think um, everybody and I encourage everybody to go ahead and um, have the same question in their mind uh, when they're on the internet looking up information you always have to question the source of the information that you are reading or receiving um, and the first question you should ask is the source is it credible and what's their background for them to have you know legit information on this so in this case for this video um, the topic is how to put on face masks and gloves so I have spent uh, several years I would say more than a decade as a safety officer for a, uh, a pharmaceutical company so it means that I was uh, responsible for uh, the health of all the employees and that includes training them on how to properly put on masks training them on how to properly take off masks uh, and the same thing with gloves how to properly put them on take them off to reduce the chances of contamination so today we'll go through uh, two different types of masks so this is what's considered a dust mask and uh, another thing to remember is every mask has its purpose and uh, there's a lot of confusion out there on whether or not masks will protect you or if you should wear them or if you should not wear them. So again, if you use a wrong mask for the wrong purpose, it's not going to do what it's supposed to do. So this mask um, is seen a lot. And so it's just a loop or a band around your ear. As you can tell, it's very loose. Uh, some masks have a, a reinforced wiring here so you can pinch this. And as you can see, it kind of keeps the shape around your nose. So that's a good thing. But this mask is not intended to have a tight fit around your face. This mask is really good at preventing, um, so let's just say I'm, I'm the wearer. It will prevent me from spreading whatever disease or virus I have. So if I was to sneeze, cough, or accidentally take out spit out of my mouth it will keep it contained in this area and not make it um, aerosolized into the air so if you are under quarantine or you think you might have um, you might be infected this is a good mask to wear to prevent you from possibly contaminating others until you are uh, no longer contagious so as far as protection from others uh, if you don't have anything else this this is better than nothing but again this does not form that tight seal where it would prevent you from inhaling um, viruses and other contamination the other uh, information about these type of masks is the material so the material is not of a grade where it can filter out a lot of things so this is called a dust mask because it's really good at just filtering larger particles like dust but when it comes to viruses and other some very small or smaller particles it does not filter those so this is more good for preventing large droplets from coming out of my mouth and getting spread into the air and of course the principles of this is you don't want to be playing with your mask 
I've seen a lot of pictures that just make me cringe and me worried when I see people wear masks the wrong way. So pulling the mask down and just covering your mouth, that this is not how this should be worn. Again, the top is made to form a seal above your nose, so you are re reducing that seal. And if the whole point of it is to prevent you from contaminating others, if you were to sneeze, um, the, the viruses or particles can come out of your nose, and then that defeats the purpose. And then the whole manipulation of the mask, putting it on, off, taking, moving it around your face is also a, a risk. Every time you manipulate the mask, you are increasing the chances of you contaminating this whole area. And as you know, your face from your eyes, nose, mouth, ears are the areas you do not want to get near any kind of virus. We touch a lot of things. So the risk comes in the fact that every time you go to move your mask, you are touching it. And that increases the chances of you touching your mouth, nose, ears. And if you happen to have hands that are contaminated, if you touch the inside of it and you were to then put it on your face, you've just defeated the whole purpose. Now you're wearing a contaminated mask. So that's the concern about this mask. And that's how you wear it. And that's how you take it off. Now the other type of mask that um, everybody is looking for, which you most likely can't get anymore, um, are the N95 masks. So they come in different shapes, different different sizes, and these are made to filter 95% of particles and viruses and, and so on. So some of them will have wires in here. The one I have only has uh, reinforced uh, sponge cushion to make a tighter seal. Uh, this has a little valve, some do, some don't. The important thing about these masks is they come in different sizes and that's very um, key to getting the right mask and getting the right uh, level of protection. If you get the wrong size and the mask doesn't fit you, it defeats the purpose. You're more likely to get contaminated or um, get infected. So part of the whole normal process of getting the right mask is having the person fitted for the right mask. And there's a whole bunch of tests um, that we normally follow according to OSHA regulations where there, there's a bunch of tests we do to make sure that the right size mask um, is obtained for the person. But in, in this current situation with the shortage of masks, so once you have the right mask, um, you would put it on. So again, there's all kinds of masks, different designs, different types. But if you have the N95, the procedure is the same and I'll go through what's important. So first part is getting these elastic bands over your head. Most masks on the, on the market don't have this clasp feature. So it's just, um, it will be more like two loops like this. Um, so it requires you to pull and put it over your head. The first important thing is to wash your hands before you handle the mask. So if you have dirty hands, contaminated hands, and you handle the mask, and for some reason you touch the inside of this mask, you just defeated the purpose of wearing one. So if you happen to have the one that's two loops that go behind your head, which is the most common one, uh, you just want to make sure your hands are clean, hold the mask, and then carefully put it over your head. And then place it directly over your nose and your mouth. The next thing you want to do is make sure that these bands are properly placed. So you, you can move these around up and down your head to the point where it gives you the snuggest fit. So in this case, if I put this right behind here, it's, it's loose, so the bottom part of the mask would not give me a tight fit. Tight fit is the key to wearing your mask properly. And if this is too loose, I'm just going to move it up. Even if you cross it up, it doesn't matter. Just move it up to a point where you can feel a tight fit. 
once you put it on you want to if you have the ones with the wire in this area you want to squeeze it and pinch it around your nose so that it keeps the shape of your nose and gives you a tighter fit around here this area is usually most often the part that is a problem so if you have one of those wire masks and you can squeeze it and shape, shape it to the size of your nose then that's great this one that I have on just has a piece of foam so it gives you an extra layer to make sure that you have a tight fit between the mask and your skin and it help it helps ensure that there's no gap so just by feeling it you can you can tell if you have a tight fit um, but again if you're limited to what you have having you know a mask is a little bit loose is better than nothing but if you can make sure you pinch your nose here if you have a wire that'd be great I've seen a lot of people wear these masks and you can clearly tell that that wire is is has not been fixed so make sure you squeeze this area if you have a wire um, the other important thing about a fit if you are a man or have a beard the presence of a beard will decrease the fit of your mask so you do not want facial hair uh, facial hair will prevent that tight seal between the mask and your face and again you do not want to be fiddling and playing around with it once you have it on just try not to touch it try not to put your hands in there um, try not to um, take it on and off just try to leave it alone so that's how you put on these masks when you take it off um, you want to wash your hands again because it involves you touching this whole area so wash your hands and then remove it and after you've removed it um, if you're gonna reuse it normally these are one-time use um, but in this crisis I've seen people reuse it even though it's not recommended um, I would put it inside of a bag uh, and store it until you're ready to reuse it now if this gets wet or you feel like you've used it too much there there is a period of time where this will no longer work as effectively um, when you use a one-time use item more than once the effectiveness is questionable after each additional use so that's something to keep in mind now the next the next uh, item are gloves so now I've seen people wear gloves and then they just behave like they're protected and they have some superpower now if you choose to wear gloves you can't just go about touching everything, pushing a cart, handling your cell phone, touching your face, and then think that once you've taken off your gloves, you're good. If you wear gloves and you don't uh, follow certain rules, you might as well not wear them because you're just back to having hands. Now you just have blue hands. So once you have gloves on, the whole point of gloves is to protect yourself and have the possibility of removing them and having less contaminants on your hands for you to transfer somewhere else. So once you have your gloves on, you can go about whatever you wanna handle, whether it's pushing a cart, grocery shopping, cleaning an area or holding doors, op opening doors, um, but as soon as as soon as your gloves have touched something you think might be contaminated, you want to consider your hands as radioactive hands. Once you are done handling whatever you're handling or doing whatever you're doing, you want to immediately take off the gloves. Or if you don't have that option, you can always um, do what we do in microbiology labs and spray down your hands with alcohol or spray down the gloves with alcohol 
or you use hand sanitizer to kind of reduce what's whatever's on there and then you would keep going about whatever you're doing and keep using them what i see as the critical point in wearing gloves is one you not touching anything that's not necessary and that includes your face uh your phone or anything that you might contaminate and later on assume that whatever you've touched is not contaminated so the second critical point is when you take them off if you do not take off your gloves properly let's just say you have virus on your hands and you take them off the wrong way you now have virus all over your hands and again if you behave like oh i just put on gloves and took them off therefore my hands are totally clean and you just contaminated your hands you just expose yourself so the way we take off gloves is you don't want to touch the inside of the gloves you don't want to touch your skin your hands anything and the trick to it is you want to grab the edge without touching your skin flip it upside down so now you've turned the glove inside out and technically there shouldn't be any contaminants on the inside of the glove as long as you've washed your hands before you put on the gloves and as long as you haven't put your fingers in there for whatever reason now the tricky part comes with the second glove so I have the first glove in the other hand and this hand technically is supposed to be clean so this is where I see people grab on to the outside of the gloves to take them off but again if you do that let's just say you had virus on here you've just contaminated this hand so what you want to do is put your finger index finger inside of the glove and try not to touch the outside then you use your finger as a hook to pull your glove out and then the other glove inside of it and now you can dispose of this again you want to behave like everything is contaminated until you're sure you've washed and disinfected everything so even after you take off your gloves you want to wash your hands use hand hand sanitizer or anything that you have to reduce your risk of spreading anything so that's uh what i wanted to help you guys uh with tips leave a comment below if you have questions that you want to ask me um, if you have more videos you want me to make um, and then if you like it gives a thumb give it a thumbs up so I know to make more of these and please be sure to share with everybody that you know so that you can, everybody's educated and everybody can reduce their risk of contamination and contaminating others and spreading this virus thank you very much bye